Now we come to our side MOOC on PlotBiz. That's the software from Indiana University which we use for displaying point distributions in three dimensions. I told you why we needed to do this. Even if it's not in three dimensions, we'll map it into three dimensions just so we can see it. We always want to look at everything we do. And we have a whole bunch of examples here, which we go through in this, this particular presentation. It's a mixture of examples using PlotViz and some slides summarizing the capabilities of PlotViz. So all of these things here are examples. And they basically go to, go through very simple examples, just cubes of eight points through um, um, metagenomics examples with over 400,000 points. And they show what happens when um, you use the basic uh, tools that uh, PlotBiz has. Say so this is not actually essential for you to uh, use PlotBiz. You can just watch me use it uh, during the class as I, look, as I look at examples from time to time. Still, I think you should always remember not to believe numbers that are pl to print it out, unless you can see it and it looks sensible. All right, here is our second big X informatics, e-commerce and lifestyle informatics. I should note that lifestyle is a, is a slightly controversial term. Uh, some people use the word lifestyle to mean living healthily and things like that. So it's some sort of variant of wellness informatics. I use lifestyle here just because um, Amazon and Netflix and things under uh, are typical highlights of the consumer the world, which are being dominant, which are hugely important in driving a lot of these technologies. Because a lot of the money that goes into, say, developing ideas to eventually get used in physics, that first experimented with these cloud technologies come from people developing things to actually service the customer in search or lifestyle informatics. So this is pretty area, pretty interesting. One thing I always like to tell people is that most things in the world are optimization problems. When you're driving your car, you're trying to optimize the problem of getting from A to B as quickly as possible without hitting anybody. So that's a constrained optimization problem. Recommender engines are trying to solve problems of finding the best possible things that you might want to do or might want to buy. And so that's an optimization problem. It's given the set of everything possible to do, what's best to do? So we make those remarks and then we go through some general issues about recommender engines. Why they're an interesting fact that there are competitions in this field. And we give examples and we notice that Netflix they considers that everything is a recommender uh, system. And they have this concept of consumer data science driven by recommender systems. So after a long, long, longish diversion on Netflix, we recap what's going on <coughs> and give more examples. And we note that you can set up a vector space, although it doesn't have a sensible metric of the normal Euclidean type. It has its own metric of a non-Euclidean type. And that's a very good way to think about things. Because if you think about things in spaces, you have a lot of intuition. Actually, the intuition could be rather misleading. Because if you go to tens of millions of dimensions in your space, it doesn't really behave like that warm, fuzzy, three-dimensional space, which we're familiar with, familiar with. And then we have the two types of collaborative filtering, item-based and user-based. And we look at technologies including k-nearest, basically k-nearest neighbors. And again, stress that those are all being applied in very high-dimensional spaces. Now we have a couple of units on um, technologies, covering the k-nearest neighbor algorithm and clustering algorithms. And uh, this doesn't do k-means clustering. It, um, it actually just applies k-means clustering to the recommender system example. And uh, so the heart of this algorithm is really the case nearest neighbor algorithm, because that's actually discussed as an algorithm. And it's, um, we use PlotBiz to visualize its results, apply to a very simple um, uh, two-dimensional problem. Actually, two and three dimensional problem. 
And then we then we use this case to discuss a, a well-known feature of clustering. It has local minima. That's a general problem in optimization. It is very different, difficult to find the global optimal. Often you can only really find local optimal. Like if you're driving from A to B, Google or whatever you whoever you look at sometimes gives you two possible routes, which are very different. So those are so-called local optima. Uh, the very different solutions in the in the region of them, it's the it's the minimum, but the um, they're different minima. So this tells you that the function, which is meant to be in this case here, the time the time taken to drive safely from A to B, that has multiple solutions, and I just described two of them, and those solutions can be widely separated, and they're locally optimal. Namely, Google will give you the best way of implementing each of them. But not distinguish between the global ones. We discuss heuristics and clustering in general as a sort of um, uh, gossip around these units. Uh, I've always liked parallel computing, I, and um, so I can all, never resist an opportunity to discuss it. So here's my discussion of parallel computing, and it's. Um, Progress, or at least my progress in this field, is illustrated by the fact that these slides are come from um, 30 years ago. So they're pretty old. PowerPoint didn't even exist when I drew those slides. All right, the next three units are coming along here, and they cover cloud technologies. And they cover uh, the approaches to clouds and the uh, Big data centers, which clouds uh, live in. Some people think of clouds as the technology to build data centers. We start these uh, units up with a discussion of NSF's concept of cyber infrastructure, which can be thought of again as the technology that implements e more or less anything, or more or less anything informatics. So cyber infrastructure is <coughs> the set of hardware and software that implements X informatics. So after that uh, little introduction uh, of NSF speak, we get on to cloud computing. We introduce it. We uh, point out that billions of views of cloud computing, whether it's new or old, or invented by A or invented by B, you will find lots of values of A and B and views of that. So I, I don't really, really care. I think cloud computing is going to continue to thrive. It will change. And possibly in drastic fashion, but it will thrive. And it has the feature that its shared resources run commercially and it's on demand, and you pay for what you use. Um, then we come to the famous analysis by Gartner, which they issue every year of technology progress. And uh, we discuss that in general, and also for 2012. Um, uh, we resume, this is done every year, so the 2013 has actually just come out. It doesn't have major changes from 2012, so we won't bother to update immediately. But eventually these slides will get evolved, presumably, as Gartner's views on the world change. And of course, Gartner's views hopefully affect, largely will affect reality, so if their view changes, the world has changed, and so it's important to note that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so after finishing a rather lengthy discussion of, of aspects of Gartner and their, and their, their um, uh, views on other things like big data and clouds, we come to cloud computing. Here we started off actually in emerging technology. We looked at clouds and big data as part of a set of emerging technologies. Gartner also looks at clouds and big data on their own and looks at the sub-technologies under them. And so we give simple examples of use as to why cloud computing is a better idea than sticking computers in your basement and paying a lot for somebody to, to look after them and to the electrical company to run them. Uh, we give details of the fee of what, they, what it is. We look at these so-called as a service concepts, network as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. We do that as the, those are the this is the cloud computing stack, 
We then do platform as a service in a little more detail. And remember, this is a, a, a class on data, it's not a general class on cloud computing, so we discuss data in the cloud. Um, after that, we come to a, the, le the uh, lesson which actually discusses cloud architectures. I mean, clouds are amazing. There are server, there are cloud data centers with up to a million servers. That's pretty big. And in 2014 and 2015, the cloud, um, people who run clouds are gonna purchase 10 million new servers. They may not actually purchase them, they may buy the parts to build them, but they will install 10 million new servers. That's pretty spectacular. They will also install 10 exabytes of storage. Then we look at the players from the different aspects of the cloud computing business ecosystem. And we come back to something we looked at a little before, what are good cloud applications. We could discuss some key features of clouds, the security, people are always worried about security, correctly so. Fault tolerance, clouds are notable for being actually pretty flaky fault-wise, but having very good ways of recovering from faults. And then we end up by discussing big data processing from an application perspective, just giving examples.